welcome back to my channel everybody today we are going to talk about skincare and before we talk about skincare can we just look at these amazing nails that i just got done thank you to my lovely friend elise for the awesome fingers is there like a cool word for fingers nails is nails ooze? i don't know all right today i'm going to talk about skincare on my face. We're going to talk about skincare on my body. I thought a little agenda of what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to start off with talking about my routine now for my face and what I use and why I use what I use on my face. I'll also talk a little bit about previous products that I used to use and enjoyed or potentially why I switched over from using them. Also talk about how to tackle those pesky little zits when they invade your space on your face. How I remove my makeup at the end of the day. Cannot talk about skincare without talking about how we clean our brushes and our beauty sponges. Finally, I am going to talk about what I do in terms of lotions and body washes on my skin and what I enjoy using. I thought that I would just add that in today since we are talking about skincare in general. So if this will be helpful, please keep watching. Up in the morning and I'm going to wash my face, I start out with the CeraVe brand, the hydrating cleanser for normal to dry skin. This is available at any drugstore and costs about 13 bucks for this bottle. Go in with my moisturizer. This is the CeraVe AM moisturizer, so for during the day. Technically, it says that it's normal to oily skin and of course I'm combination to dry skin, so I prefer to use several pumps of this. Add in an eye cream. This is the Lotus Youth Preserve Eye Cream and the Vivier Skin Platine. With eye creams, what I wanted to offer, don't know if there's any magical ones that take away lines and send you to outer space at the same time. Just use it for hydration, and these do the trick. After I go in with that lotion, I use something that is technically prescribed to me by my dermatologist. This is called Phenacea. I'm not sure if I'm totally butchering the name, but this is a cream that helps with uh, rosacea and dermatitis, I believe. Another item that I take that counts for my skincare routine is a pill. Um, basically, these two products were given to me by my dermatologist when I developed dermatitis, uh, specifically perioral dermatitis, in a lovely square shape, like a bingo card, around my mouth a few months ago. So I went without makeup, I went without using pretty much anything extra to cleanse my skin because I wanted the dermatitis gone. She gave me some creams, it cleared up, but then there was still redness, which is also known as rosacea on my skin and that's why I take the Phoenicia on my skin as a lotion and I take a pill as well once a day. At night I go in with hydrating cleanser again. If I haven't exfoliated yet I only exfoliate once a week. I used to exfoliate probably every day and then I realize that of course the oils in your skin get stripped away when you are exfoliating and that means that you're kind of going to overproduce oils. When I do exfoliate after I cleanse I use the Aveeno Skin Brightening Daily Scrub. These contain microbeads so the exfoliating factor in this is not anything harsh on your skin and I really like it. I go in with my PM cream of the CeraVe and again this is technically for normal to oily skin and go in with one of these eye creams. Some of the items that I used to use that I thought I would mention because I really did enjoy using them was um, the C. Buckthorn Best Skin Ever Cleansing Oil and Cetaphil. So starting off with the C. Buckthorn Best Skin Ever, this was actually recommended by a lovely makeup artist that I know um, and it is a oil cleanser. I think I have always shied away from oil cleansers because I thought that they would just clog my pores, but oil attracts oil, right? Like dissolves like. So basically if you do have oils in your skin, in your pores, clogged pores, an oil cleanser can actually be really helpful for you. So this is the C. Buckthorn Best Skin Ever. I stopped using this oil when I did develop the dermatitis. Dermatitis is a tricky thing because you never really know where it comes from. If it's a hormonal thing, environmental, if it's from makeup that you're wearing. So basically I stopped using almost everything on my face, but that product was great. A beautiful product full of natural oils, rose, grapefruit, um, lavender, 
all kinds of awesome stuff. Before the oil, I used to use Cetaphil. This is another over-the-counter, in your regular aisle, in your drugstore product that's actually really close to the CeraVe stuff. Um, just going back to basics can actually be really great for your skin and I really enjoy using that for a time. Next thing I want to talk about is what happens, what do I do when a zit, when a zit decides to stomp around on my territory? Any zit popping, I do not use my fingers. fingers. I use this lovely doodab. It's got a bit of a hook. You basically are laying the hole over top of a zit and pressing down. It likely will draw blood and all that lovely mess. However, my first plan of action is always to go in with peroxide or with a Q-tip is what I use to basically give me a base to work off and to make sure everything is clean. Once I finish with peroxide and it has dried to some extent, I will then go in with my doodab. This is another product from Living Libations. So basically the same brand as the oil that I talked about. It's supposed to reduce the redness and potential, I guess, for scarring on any acne. You do actually have something that's one step up from the doodab that is for more really deep cystic zits. And that's actually something that I wanna get my hands on. When I have used this at night, overnight, in the morning, if I remember to put it on kind of newer zits or even redness on my face from old zits, I noticed that the redness and the aggravation from the zit definitely does go down. If at any point you do find yourself having issues with your skin that are much different than normal, that kind of thing, I would highly recommend checking with your doctor and getting a referral to a dermatologist. I concurrently saw a dermatologist and a naturopath. I really wanted to look at potentially what could be going on inside of my body that could be causing my skin to flare up with something like dermatitis, which is something I've never had before. So I actually do see a naturopath regularly help me look at different areas of my life in terms of stress um, and potentially different kind of remedies and pills and um, supplements help with my skin from the inside out. So that is kind of a bit of an aside, but times when we talk about skincare, we often think that it's all about the surface stuff. In general though, our skin is hugely affected by what we put in it as well. And sometimes that healing for our skin needs to come from the inside out. At the end of the day or at the end of filming when I'm taking my makeup off, the big things that you may have heard about is micellar water don't even know if I'm saying it right. This is the Garnier brand stuff. It is oil free. You're supposed to be able to just put it on your face, let's say with a cotton wipe and not have to rinse off afterwards. I did enjoy using this product. However, I decided to try something new just for fun. I'm using coconut oil. So I went down to my 10,000 pound tub of coconut oil in my kitchen and I grabbed some, put it in a container. And this is what I use at the end of the day if I'm wearing makeup. Basically slather it all over your face, warm it up in your hands. It goes without scrubbing. You don't have to tug at your skin to take off your makeup. You just lather it all over, including your lips, so you'll look like a really awesome, awesome clown by the end of it. And then you can take a um, cotton swab and wipe off the excess as you go. And you don't really need to tug at your skin, which I really like. Plus, it's a bit moisturizing at the same time. You can use baby shampoo. That's another really great and affordable option to take off your makeup or to take um, off makeup off of brushes and things like that. I run it under water. This is another shampoo that I have. It's the Quo Purifying Brush Shampoo. Again, anything you can find that potentially has as little additives to it as possible, run it under water and I squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. And I may rub my fingers over the end of this just to try to get the foundation, for instance, that really ends up on the ends of the beauty blender. So just rest them in their container like this. When they are more expanded after you wash them, they sit nicely on the top and that just allows them to air dry. With respect to your brushes, I've heard that it's ideal that you clean your brushes once a week in terms of a deep clean. I'm actually waiting for something in the mail that is one of those silicone um, kind of mats for your sink and it's got different grids on it to help wash your, your makeup brush.
Once I get that, I will let you guys know how I like it. What I do now for cleaning my makeup brushes once a week is I go in with baby shampoo, with my Quo shampoo, under hot water. I'll put a bunch of water in my hand and just kind of swish it around with the hot water and soap. And then afterwards, I lay them down and let them towel dry overnight. In terms of body skin care, there's a certain line that I like to use for all of my lotions and things like that, that I absolutely love, and that is Lush. So to start off with hand cream, this is the Helping Hands hand cream. Um, this has honey, almond oil, and lavender. I love this stuff. I generally spend a little over a hundred bucks when I go there once or twice a year, but those two trips a year last me a very long time. The other item that I really like for your body or for your hands actually in conjunction with the hand lotion is the ocean salt. So this is face and body scrub. Back to body lotions, this is called Sleepy. This is a uh, creamy cocktail of jojoba oil, lavender infusion to feel soft, smooth and relaxed. And that is how I feel after it. I really like this stuff at the end of the day. The other type that they have is called their Charity Pot. That's one of their classic body lotions. In the shower, I love to use the Snow Fairy Shower Gel. In general, all of Lush's shower gels are a game changer. I absolutely love them. This ginormous bottle will literally last me probably half a year. You need the tiniest amount and it is absolutely beautiful. This was one of their Christmas line items. To go along with the Snow Fairy shower gel, I love the body conditioner. Any of Lush's body conditioners, the idea with them is that you're applying them in the shower, potentially turning the shower off, letting the layer stay on your body, do a little dance, because that's what you do in the shower, sing a little bit, Beyonce, totally. And then you just rinse it off. My kids are up even though it took them two hours to go down. And uh, I'm gonna go, maybe go for a walk. Maybe like this, I think, good ear warmer. Thank you for joining me today on my channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And I hope that you have a wonderful and colorful day. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.